the Most High be praised today. <clears throat> we welcome each and every one of you to School of Messiah Bible Institute. Those of you who are watching us by live stream, we welcome you and thank you for joining us in our teaching on this Sabbath afternoon. Our course is Biblical Theology 2. And the lesson that we are looking at today is the Covenant People of Elohim, Part 3. Let us have a word of prayer before we get into the topic. Abba Yah, thank you for your great grace, your goodness, your kindness, your mercies to us. We thank you for this opportunity to provide teaching to your Talmudim, your disciples, your students. We thank you for your graciousness. We thank you for the teaching anointing. And ask Abba that you would give insight, give clarity in regards to this last portion of this subject that we have been covering on the covenant people of Elohim. We ask you to show forth your wisdom, edify, encourage, and enlighten your servants. May they grow in your grace. In the mighty name of Yahshua, our King, we thank you. Amen. All right, today we're looking at the last part of the subject that we have been covering regarding the covenant people of Elohim. This uh, I find to be a very important topic as it relates to the people of Elohim. It's very important that we understand um, the theology, the biblical perspective teaching regarding this because one's understanding of the covenant people of Elohim, the house of Israel in the Messiah. One's understanding about this is what really determines how the scriptures are understood, it determines how the scriptures are seen, it determines how the scriptures are interpreted. So this is a subject of major importance. Now in part one and part two, we dealt with that Elohim has only one covenant people. That covenant people is composed of all ethnicities, not just the blood descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We discovered that in the first covenant, first congregational covenant, let me say that, because there are other covenants that uh, we find enacted. There was a covenant made with our father Abraham that Yah made to solidify and to confirm his promises regarding Abraham being a father of many people and that through his seed all the families of the earth would be blessed. But we also find a pivotal point where Yahuwah makes a congregational covenant with the house of Israel called the Congregation of Israel. The Kehila Yisrael, 
congregation of Israel. And so when that covenant was made through Moshe, that's Moses, we found that included within the congregation of Israel was a mixed multitude, other ethnicities. We find from the very start of the congregation of Israel that it was a mixed ethnic people group. The primary constituents of it were Hebrew Israelites, and I use the term Hebrew Israelites because all of the descendants, technically speaking, all of the descendants of Abraham are Hebrews because Abraham is a Hebrew. But we use the term Hebrew Israelite because we refer to the group of people that came not only from Abraham, not only from Isaac, but from Jacob, Yaakov, whose name was changed to Yisrael. So, from Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, we have the 12 tribes of Yisrael. And it is from those 12 tribes and those who joined themselves to those 12 tribes that we have the whole congregation of Israel composed of not just Hebrew Israelites, but also other peoples. There were Ethiopians, Edomites, Kenizzites. Kenizzites, uh, just to say a, a note about the Kenizzite, because um, Caleb, everybody I'm sure from reading scripture remembers Joshua and Caleb. Caleb was a Kenizzite. His father was named Japuna. So what we find about that is Caleb was not um, an Israelite. But Caleb, being a Kenizzite, Kenaz, is a descendant of Edom. So uh, Caleb comes from the Edomite line. And so, you know, there are many within the Hebrew Israelite community that um, have a lot of things to say about Edom. And the scripture says a lot about Edom and the judgment that's going to come upon Edom. One of the things that I've found with um, many of my Hebrew Israelite brothers, who most would, would refer to as the black Hebrew Israelites, they're still my brothers and sisters, although others might not uh, embrace them. They're my brothers and sisters. Anyone who believes in Yahshua, the Messiah, I regard as my brother and my sister. So, um, their perspective really uh, is such that they don't believe that an Edomite has any place at all in the congregation of Israel. So, we have to uh, bring truth to the forefront and we have to show the biblical evidence as we did. We showed in uh, the first part of uh, Covenant People of Elohim, we showed that the Most High said that the Egyptian and the Edomite may be admitted to the congregation after the third generation from the departure from Egypt. So we know that the Almighty has allowed the Edomite. We see that with Caleb. Caleb was already a part of the congregation of Israel at that time. So all those who had joined themselves to Israel when they left out of Egypt were a part of the congregation of Israel. That was what we would call the first grafting in, where you have non-Hebrew Israelites grafted in to Israel and becoming Israelites. Um, but the Almighty had given instructions about uh, the Egyptians and the Edomites and uh, Ammonites and the Moabites 
he gave instructions regarding their admittance um, in later times, such as Moab and Edom, he said, after the 10th generation. And that's because Moab and Edom did not treat the Israelites kindly when they uh, were passing through their lands, coming to the land of Canaan. So, <clears throat> I'm saying all of that to help reinforce in our understanding that the house of Yisrael, in its origins as a congregation in covenant with the Most High through Moshe, started off as a ethnically mixed people group. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we need to eliminate the thinking that there's a two-tier type of a system among the people of Elohim. We, we have these ideas that are floating around in uh, Western Christianity where the belief is there's either two peoples of Elohim, Israel, or the nation of Israel, as the dispensational likes to call it, and the church, and that the nation of Israel is still supposed to keep the Torah because it's a part of their culture and their heritage, and the church is not under the law. All they keep is the law of love. And that's basically it. Those are ideas that are uh, in the mainstream. What's problematic with that, it is not consistent with the whole scheme of how the Most High designed the congregation of Israel. The Most High did not design the congregation of Israel to only be ethnically Hebrew Israelites. He did not. It was composed of many ethnic people because the Almighty has only one covenant people and that one covenant people has only one Torah. Well, the scripture says that there shall be one Torah both for the native born and for the stranger living in the land. So, it is the desire of the Almighty to have one people, one Torah, which means that Torah has not been eliminated. Torah that is a part or has, has been designated as part of the covenant framework uh, under Moshe. Torah is also continued to be part of the covenant framework under the renewed covenant that Yahshua enacted. And so those are things that is necessary for, for us to, uh, to note. How the covenant people how Israel is to be seen biblically um, when we share this and teach this, especially from a theological perspective. We need to deal specifically with what the scripture is teaching and not with what we hear from other Christian traditions and theological perspectives about who Israel is and who the church is. There are no separations. There is one people of Elohim, one congregation of Elohim. It is Israel within the framework of the new covenant. Now that I've made that particular um, uh, distinction, there's only one people of Elohim, now we need to move forward and we're going to deal with this subtopic that we're covering today. The subtopic we're covering today is Israel under the renewed covenant and unbelieving Hebrew Israelites or unbelieving Judean Israelites. So we need to see biblically. We know that Elohim has only one people of Elohim. We know that Israel continues as being that covenant people. The issue today has to do with where do the unbelieving Judean, commonly called Jew, 
I like to use the term the unbelieving Hebrew Israelite. Where is the unbelieving Hebrew Israelite with respect to all of this? Because there are those who have the belief, especially those within the framework of what we call rabbinic Judaism. And rabbinic Judaism, when I use the phrase rabbinic Judaism, I am referring to those who are regarded as being a part of what is commonly called Orthodox Judaism. Whether you are considered a ultra-Orthodox, Orthodox, conservative, or reformed. All of those branches are under the umbrella of rabbinic Judaism. They all follow the Talmud, Mishnah in the Talmud, as their halakha. That means their way of living. And so those who follow rabbinic Judaism, they are a product of the sect of the Pharisees that regrouped the religion of Israel after A.D. 70. After A.D. 70, the rabbis got together and they regrouped, reformed, reconstructed the religion so that they could preserve it. But they preserved it from their perspective. And their perspective, which was the tradition of the elders as Yahshua, um, or as they uh, referred to it when they were talking to Yahshua, um, the traditions of the elders have been codified into what is now known as the Mishnah, and the Talmud, and the Targums. Okay? So, um, they are unbelievers. They do not believe in the Messiah. They, they, they know who Yahshua the Messiah is and have made a uh, formal declaration of their rejection of him. And in their Talmud, there are some um, negative things that are stated about Yahshua. And they have not held back anything in regards to how they, how they have felt about him. So what we need to do, we need to discuss um, what the Messiah said concerning these Judean Israelites that rejected him. Because from their perspective, they believe that they are still in covenant with Yahuwah. They believe that um, they still have a covenant. They believe that they are still his people. And so we need to look at scripture and we need to understand from the biblical perspective where they stand. Um, and I need to say this before I move forward. What, what we do need to look at is prophetically, from the standpoint of what the prophets have declared about the restoration of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, there is prophetic references about the restoration in the latter days that the Israelites will return back to their king, to David their king, and to Yahuwah. So what we do know is that prophetically there is a promise, there is a prophetic promise that's out there that is upon all of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whether they are in Yahshua or not. That promise is out there. And that the goal of Elohim is for the restoration of all of the descendants. Now, are all of the descendants going to be restored? No. And we're going to get into scripture because scripture talks about that. But that is the intended purpose of Elohim. But presently, for those who are not in the Messiah, what does the scripture say about them? 
and for those who rejected the Messiah during the time of his first coming, what was their position with reference to Elohim? And that's what we need to look at and get into so that we can make some very um, uh, I'm looking for the right word, so forgive me for my pause. We need, we need to make some very definite uh, markings here so that we will know who is regarded as belonging to Elohim. When we deal with the Bible, those that belong to Elohim are those who are in covenant with Elohim. So we're going to hear what the Messiah said. Um, there's, there's a lot that the rabbis say that are not in Yahshua. And there are a lot of things that are being said by Messianic Jewish rabbis. These are those Messianic believers that believe in Yahshua who come out of the rabbinic Jewish framework and a lot of things that are coming out from them are not completely in alignment with the Messiah, Yahshua, and what Yahshua said. Because I, and, and I say this because after 25 years of being around um, those who are a part of the so-called Messianic movement and listening to the teaching of Messianic Jewish rabbis and listening to what they offer, they offer a mixture of teaching from rabbinic Jewish thought or Phariseeism and from what the Messiah Yahshua has said. And what we discover in Scripture, the Messiah Yahshua uh, separated himself from, yeah, he separated himself from Pharisaic teaching. And anytime we say Pharisaic teaching or teaching of the Pharisees, it's rabbinic Judaism. That's what it is. Anything that's Pharisee is rabbinic Judaism because rabbinic Judaism came from Phariseeism. So um, Messiah made some distinctions. Messiah said to the apostles, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And the disciples didn't understand what he was talking about. They thought he was talking about food. And Messiah said, no, I'm not talking about food. He said, you all know if I needed food, we can, we can make that. We can create that. He said, I'm talking about the teaching of the Pharisees. He said, beware of the teaching of the Pharisees. So Yahshua made it very clear that he was in opposition to the teaching of the Pharisees that came in conflict with Torah and with what he was saying. So, let's get into some scriptures. As we see, um, in regards to the Judean Israelites of the time of Messiah, Messiah said something in John chapter 8, verse 44. And these passages that I'm going to read, um, they are going to be a bit challenging for um, the uh, rabbinic Jewish person that may be listening uh, because what the Messiah has to say is, is not too positive. And much of the time these scriptures that I'm reading you really don't find too many uh, messianic rabbis bringing this information out because as I mentioned many of the messianic uh, rabbis of the rabbinic uh, Jewish community um, they have strong ties to their um, rabbinic and Ashkenazic Jewish community that's for those who are Ashkenazic which is the great the greater majority of them are Ashkenazic uh, very few Sephardim, but <clears throat> what we what we find is that some of these passages of Scripture that we're going to read uh, probably probably won't be stated because they want to try and win their people, and they don't want to say anything negative uh, 
that would in any way denote that the unbelieving uh, Pharisaic rabbinic Jewish person is separated from Elohim. But we have to declare truth from the forefront. We have, we have to bring that forth. So, John, Yochanan, chapter 8, verse 44. And this is what it says. And uh, let, let me back it up, actually. I'm going to back it up to uh, verse 39, and I'll read through to verse 44. It says, they answered him, Abraham is our father. These are unbelieving Judeans speaking to Yahshua. And Yahshua said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did, or you would do the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from Elohim. This is not what Abraham did. You are indeed doing what your father does. They said to him, we are not illegitimate children. In the King James Version, it would say something like, we are not children of fornication. And it says, we have one father, Elohim himself. And Yahshua said to them, if Elohim were your father, you would love me, for I came from Elohim, and now I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot accept my word. Now listen to verse 44. All right? Here's the challenging verse. This is what Yahshua says to those unbelieving Judean Israelites that did not believe on him. He says, you are from your father the devil. And you choose to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature. For he is a liar and the father of lies. So these unbelieving um, Judean Israelites here that did not embrace the Messiah, who knew who he was, but chose not to embrace him. Yahshua says that their father is the devil. That's a pretty harsh statement to make, I think. But this is what he said in regards to those unbelieving Judean Israelites who, after hearing the message, chose not to receive him and chose not to believe on him. Now, please understand that as we're communicating this, I don't want to give the impression that I am calling every unbelieving Israelite a child of the devil. I am not doing that. And I am not insinuating that Yahshua is calling every unbelieving Judean Israelite a child of the devil. I am not saying that. But what Messiah says, and he's speaking to individuals who knew who he was, who heard his message, but did not receive it. So what we're saying is that those Israelites who after hearing the message, let me say this very clearly, who after hearing the message of Yahshua, and understand it fully, and know that the message is that Yahshua is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? But choose to reject him. Yahshua says that they are of their father, the devil. In other words, they listen to the lies, the influence of Hasatan, the devil. So, as... Uh, Challenging as it may be, that's the reality. Is there redemption for them? There's redemption for everybody who repents. As long as breath is in someone's body, there is 
the opportunity for redemption and restoration. But this is what Yahshua said, plain and simple. I can't change what he said. Um, Yahshua also indirectly stated that Abraham was not their father because they did not do the works of Abraham. That's a very powerful thing to say. Because ethnically, by blood, there are children of Abraham by blood. But because they did not do the works of Abraham, it says that they are not <laughs> children of Abraham. Matter of fact, John the Baptist also said something with regard to, um, to the unbelieving Judean Israelite when he came. And he was speaking to those who were questioning whether they should believe the preaching that John was, was giving. And John the Baptist said that don't say that you are Abraham's seed. He said because Elohim can raise up these stones and cause them to become children of Abraham. And then he said that the axe is laid at the root of the tree. So, what is being stated by John the Baptist and by the Messiah is that those who are connected to the tree, or at least at that time, were connected to the tree, but were not going to continue in the way that Elohim was now moving in. When John the Baptist came, John the Baptist came to prepare the way for the Messiah. So for those who were not open to follow the way that Yahuwah had uh, opened up, when he brought John the Baptist out on the scene, when he uh, brought the Messiah on the scene, for those who rejected that pathway, they were cut off. Axe was laid at the root of the tree. Um, another thing we want to note, and this is all in the verses that we read with reference to um, John chapter 8, verses 39 through 44. It tells us that the Messiah indirectly stated that Elohim was not their father because they did not love him. So here, Yeshua says that Abraham's not your father, Elohim's not your father, and the devil is your father. Though, that, that's, that's, you know, a bit hard to digest. Now, making those kind of statements, you can begin to understand why the religious leaders wanted to kill him. Because these were the things that he was responding with. He was telling them, you, you're, not, you're not connected to the Almighty. You're not connected to Abraham, but you are connected to the devil. It's very, very hard to swallow. These are the words of the Messiah when he spoke to those unbelieving Judean Israelites that heard the message but did not embrace it. Also, over in uh, John chapter 10, verse 24 through 26, Messiah has something else to say to those who did not believe on him. These were, and, and this information is all uh, directed towards the unbelieving Hebrew Israelite. Those who reject Yahshua as being the Messiah after they hear the message. Now, I... I say those who reject Yahshua the Messiah after hearing the message because if a person's never heard the message, they've never really heard the message of Yahshua, then they need to hear that message because they could very well have an open heart and an open mind and an open spirit towards Elohim, but they just hadn't heard the message about Yahshua as being that Messiah of Israel. And, and, and mind you, the Messiah, Yahshua, him being the Savior, does not in any way 
eliminate Torah keeping. You know, with the rise, and I, let, let me just do this little side note, and then I'll get back into um, the, the teaching. But I do need to bring this side note out. Because uh, with the rise of Western uh, Christianity, with the Roman Catholic uh, system, their presentation of the message of the Messiah was such that it forced those who were Judean Israelites, commonly called Jews, it forced them to stop keeping Torah. And that is an inaccurate message. The only part of the message with regards to Yahshua that was correct is the fact that he is the Messiah, the son of Elohim. But everything else with regard to keeping commandments, what should be kept and what should not be kept, that other information is not accurate. And that has been something that has turned a great many of Hebrew Israelites off from coming to the Messiah, at least those who were part of Judean Israelites or Jewish communities, and um, knowing only the rabbinic tradition that they have uh, have learned uh, in their upbringing. So it's important that when we talk about Yahshua the Messiah, we make sure that we're not trying to tell Hebrew Israelites and Judean Israelites that this message eliminates Torah, because it does not. All right? But after hearing the proper message, and you choose, if you are a uh, Judean Israelite, and you choose not to embrace Yahshua, then you fit the category that Yahshua has placed unbelieving Israelites in. And uh, as I said, I'm not trying to throw stones, but I, ha I have to speak the truth, and I have to echo what my Messiah echoed. And that puts me in a position, especially as a teacher of Scripture, a, a moray, uh, one who teaches theology, it puts me in a position where I'm going to be viewed um, in a possible negative light because I am presenting these verses of Scripture that are not positive with reference to the unbelieving Judean Israelite or the unbelieving Hebrew Israelite. That here is the message of Yahshua from Nazareth and then rejects it. So in uh, John chapter 10, verses 24 through 26, Yahshua uses the same kind of, of language here where he says that the unbelieving Judean Israelite or the unbelieving Jew is not his sheep. Let's go to John chapter 10, verse 24. Listen, look at what it says. It says, So the Judeans or the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Yahshua answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify of me. But you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. So here we have Yahshua very plainly saying that the unbelieving Judean Israelite is not his sheep. That's a hard one to swallow. You see, when the Messiah uh, in John chapter 10 referred to, him, to himself as being the door to the sheep, and he said that the sheep will come in and go out and find pasture, and he said that my sheep hear my voice, and then he said, other sheep I have that are not of this fold, them also I must bring. We find that Yeshua was indicating that he is the shepherd that goes out to find his sheep. He was uh, discussing 
things that were related to what's prophesied in Ezekiel. Ezekiel, you look in Ezekiel chapter 34, and it talks about the sheep, and it says that Yahuwah will go and seek and search for a sheep and gather them. Well, Messiah, when he refers to himself as being the shepherd and referred to himself as being the door, he is associating himself with that prophecy. But when it comes to those who are his sheep, he says that the unbelieving Judean Israelites are not his sheep. So in order to be a sheep, it has to be one who, after hearing the message, okay, because he came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he came to those who were already lost and already scattered. So the scriptures that we're reading, it's not saying that everyone who is an unbelieving Israelite or who at this moment have not uh, is not attached to the Messiah. It's not saying that everyone who is not attached to the Messiah at this moment is of the devil or is not of the seed of Abraham, spiritually speaking, but it is referring to those who, after hearing the message of the Messiah and then rejecting it, because Yahshua is going out, seeking, searching for a sheep. When the message of the Messiah goes out, to those who are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who, who have not heard the proper message of Yahshua, after hearing it, receiving it, and 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 uh, and, and then well, I, well, not receiving it, but if they reject it after hearing it and then rejecting it, then they are classified in these areas that the Messiah has classified them. So it has to do with those who hear it and then afterwards willfully rejects it. He says, they are not my sheep. Also in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, there's a statement made by Yahshua where he says that there are those who say that they are Jews but are not <clears throat> but are of the synagogue of Satan. Here we have another situation where Yahshua is referring to the unbelieving Judean Israelites. In Revelation, he's writing to the Messianic Israelite community. And for those who have been uh, following with our ministry, when we've been teaching in the book of Acts, because this is what we've been teaching in, uh, each Sabbath, but we've been talking about how uh, the, the apostles, as they go and they preach in the various cities and synagogues and those things, and how um, many within the synagogues would turn to the Messiah. In some instances, the whole synagogue would turn to Messiah and and uh, become a Messianic Israelite community. So we we find that those who did not turn to the Messiah became the greatest opponents of the Messiah and would purposefully persecute and purposefully would do everything that they could to hinder the work of the ministry and message of the Messiah going forth. So you have this continuing even into the latter part of the first century during the 90s of the first century when John was writing this uh, book called the book of Revelation. And in those verses, Revelation chapter 2 verse 9 and Revelation chapter 3 verse 9, uh, as Messiah is speaking to the congregations, he says that there are those who say that they are Jews or Judeans, but they are not. They are of the synagogue of Satan. So what Yahshua does, he refers to those unbelieving Israelites who had already rejected Yahshua and who were persecuting his people. He said they are not Jews. Now that's, a, that's a difficult thing to take because many of them were indeed blood descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now there are those who, who will say, well, it says they are not Jews because in reality they are Edomites. Now we know that there were 
uh, Edomites that were a part of the Judean Israelite uh, community throughout the Roman Empire. We know that because during the time of the Maccabean um, and Hash Maccabean or Hashmonean kingdom, that they had um, conquered Edom and absorbed Edom into Judah and forced them to become Israelites or Judeans. And so you had a mixture of Edomites with the uh, Judean Israelites during that time, and that same mixture was seen there during the first century. So there are those who say, well, they call, they, it says they're not because they're Edomites. Well, yes, yes and no, because Yahshua was very plain about saying those who did not believe in him were regarded as not being Jews, all right? So, and uh, the last part in this section, it says that they were of the synagogue of Satan. Now, this is, this is a very strong point to make because Messiah, by saying this, because he puts it together, he says that they are not Jews, but are of the synagogue of Satan. What he's saying is that since they don't belong to me, they're not my sheep. And in John chapter 8, he said, you are of your father, the devil. So he is connecting the whole, uh, the whole understanding that those who are unbelievers after hearing the message and persist in their unbelief, persist in their rebellion, persist in their rejection of Yahshua, and continued persecution of his people, he says they are of the synagogue of Satan. Why is that? Because Satan hates Yahshua. So if you have Judean Israelites that hate the Messiah, Yahshua, regardless of how tough this may be to embrace, Yahshua said, you are of the synagogue of Satan. Now, there again, I'm, I'm trying to be delicate as I possibly can. But I have a vow on my life to teach the truth. And so I have to say what the scriptures are saying. It's not my intention to go running around saying that the synagogues that reject Yahshua and that hate Yahshua, I'm not going to go around saying you synagogue of Satan, you synagogue of Satan. I don't want to create enemies. But these scriptures here from Messiah's words, not mine, Messiah's words. He says, because they are against him, he calls them the synagogue of Satan. And there again, this information that we're communicating is to help us to understand where is the place of the unbelieving Israelite. Okay? The place of the unbelieving Israelite is such that they are not a part of the house of Israel in covenant fellowship. They have to be grafted back in. They have to be reconnected to the vine that they were once a part of. Because as John the Baptist said, the axe was laid to the root of the tree. And the unbelieving Israelites were cut off. The uh, Apostle Paul said in the book of Revelation, not Revelation, but the book of Romans rather, excuse me, 11th chapter, he says that if they will not continue in unbelief, this, this is the unbelieving Judean Israelites, he says, if they will not continue in unbelief, but if they repent, they can be grafted back into their olive tree. So there is redemption. There is restoration. Now we want to see Judean unbelievers have forfeited their citizenship in Israel within the framework of the renewed covenant. <clears throat> the reason why they are not a part of Israel anymore is because when they rejected the Messiah, they forfeited their citizenship. Why is that? Because the sheepfold is Israel. Always has been Israel, always will be Israel. 
And Yahshua has declared himself as being the door to the sheep. If you don't come through Yahshua, you're not going to be in Israel. That's why I said the axe has been laid at the root of the tree for the unbelieving Israelites. The, those who were a part of Israel in the first century, when they rejected Yahshua, they were cut off. They were cut off from the tree. They were cut off. But they can be grafted back in. But with rejecting Yahshua, there is a forfeiture of citizenship in Israel. Now, does that mean that the prophecy of a restoration is now of none effect? No. The prophecy of a restoration is always in effect. And so long as there is breath within the descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, so long as there is breath, when the Messiah comes to them, to find them, to give them his word, if they receive it, they'll be delivered. And that promise will have taken its effect. It will have come to pass. However, if a person rejects and continues to reject until their last breath, then they will forever be separated from Elohim and not a part of Israel, even though they were a blood descendant. Because being a blood descendant doesn't make you a covenant Israelite. You got a lot of blood descendants out there that are not in covenant. They don't belong to Elohim because they've been cut off. So being a blood descendant doesn't automatically give one favor with Elohim. It doesn't automatically bring them into the covenant blessings. You must come through Yahshua to be restored through the renewed covenant. All right. We find here in Romans eleven seventeen, and I made mention of that, that they are regarded as broken branches, broken off from the olive tree because they rejected Yahshua as the Messiah. Now, Elohim and the unbelieving Israelites. What is Elohim's position? How does he feel about the unbelieving Judean Israelite? Well, first of all, Elohim loves the unbelieving Judean Israelite. He loves the unbelieving Hebrew Israelite. He loves them. Why? In Yochanan 3.16, John 3.16, it says... That Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So he loves everybody. But it says he gave his son so that whosoever believes in him, there again, that whole aspect of faith, receiving Yahshua, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So he loves, he loves the unbelieving Judean Israelite or unbelieving Jew, as it's commonly called. He loves you. If you are an unbelieving Israelite listening by live stream as we are teaching, he loves you. Elohim has not rejected the unbelieving Judean. Okay? He has not rejected the unbelieving Jew. Some would say, well, Elohim has rejected his people. You know, in Romans 11, 1, the Apostle Paul makes a statement, because I'm sure they were making statements back then, saying, well, you know, has he rejected his people? He said, no, Elohim has not rejected his people. The situation is, is that his people have rejected him. And if you reject the Most High, you separate yourself from the Most High and you forfeit everything that you once had with the Most High if you reject it. That's the, the reality. So we need to be mindful of that. But in uh, Romans 11 verse 1 it says this, I ask then, has Elohim rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, and of the tribe of Benjamin. 
So Paul says, hey, I'm living proof that Elohim has not rejected his people. I'm an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. <laughs> All right? He said, no. So the issue is, has Elohim rejected the unbelieving Israelite? No, it's the unbelieving Israelite that's chosen to reject the Messiah. And in rejecting Yahshua, the Messiah, hence, they reject Yahuwah, Elohim. So we find that unbelieving Israelites, Judean Israelites, have rejected and are separated from Elohim, the Father, because of their rejection of Yeshua. In John chapter 8, verse 19, and in John chapter 8, verses 42 through 47. Another point. In this section, Elohim's will is for Judean unbelievers, so unbelieving Jews, to be grafted back into the olive tree. Based upon the conditions of repentance and acceptance of Yahshua as the Messiah. That's in Romans chapter 11, verses 23 and 24. It tells us very plainly, as I have already stated, if they will not remain in unbelief, they can be grafted back in again. Also, it's the will of Elohim that all Israel be saved. Now, all Israel being saved, that's according to Romans 11, verses 26 through 27. When it talks about all Israel being saved, it's referring to the full number of those that repent. Because we know that not every Judean Israelite is going to believe. There are many who have went to their graves rejecting Yahshua and who are eternally separated from Elohim. When it says all Israel will be saved, it's referring to the full number of those that repent. All right? What is Elohim's methods of drawing the unbelieving Judean Israelite to repentance and faith in Yahshua? And this is where we have to uh, be very clear that we understand that there is only one message of the kingdom. And this one message of the kingdom has gone out to the Judean first, or the Jew first, and then to the nations, the Gentiles. One message. There is no one message for the Jew, one message for the Gentile. That's another concept that's floating around also. You need to understand there's only one message. Yahshua gave one message, and he said, go preach the kingdom of Elohim. That's the message. And contained within that message is repentance, faith in Yahshua as being the Messiah, and repentance toward Elohim. That's the message to enter in. So the preaching of the gospel, that message, is what is used to bring the unbelieving Judean and Hebrew Israelite to repentance. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I'm going to read that. And we're going to be wrapping this up. And it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of Elohim for salvation to everyone who has faith, or as the King James Version says it, to everyone who believes, to the Judean or to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. So what we see here, the gospel is to everybody. One gospel, one message to everybody. That's the way that the Messiah is reaching out to the unbelieving Judean Israelite. And there is another method that Elohim has to cause the 
unbelieving Judean Israelites all over the world in all of their different shades and colors. Because you got Israelites on the planet all over the world in all different shades and colors, from the blackest of black to the whitest of white. I say that because most people, in, at least in this Western world, uh, when, they, when they hear the term Israelite or Jew, they think of uh, someone who is of a white or a very light complexion or just has a little color, and they don't consider those who are of the darker, dark skin complexion, such as those of our ancestors from West Africa, and those brothers and sisters of ours that are in Ethiopia, and in the Sudan, and down in South Africa, and those in India, and those areas, and many other areas where you have Israelites that are of darker complexion. We come in all shades and colors. And I need to make that known so that people will understand that you have ethnic Hebrew Israelites in all shades and colors. So it's important we, we, we understand that. We are not just, we, we are not grafted in to Israel, those of us who are the blood descendants. All right? And all those who are grafted in, Bless the Almighty. Your place in Israel is no different than ours. We don't have no special uh, kudos and better than anyone else. Don't let anybody uh, get you to thinking that either. All right, but the last method that we're going to note as to how Elohim is going to draw and is drawn unbelieving Israelites to himself, to repentance, faith in the Messiah is going to be through the persecution that's going to come resulting from the time of Jacob's trouble, which is also called the day of Yahuwah. This is the period when all the nations will gather against Judah and Jerusalem, immediately preceding the second coming of Messiah to the earth. You can read about this in Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 4 through 9. You can read about this also in Zechariah chapter 12, verses 1 through 13. And you can also read about it in Zechariah chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. So these are the ways in which the Almighty is using to draw the unbelieving Israelite back to himself. He loves Israel. He loves the unbelieving Israelite. Why? Because of the promise he made to Abraham. His goal and his aim is for the restoration of every Israelite on the planet. And at the same time, he is also sending his message out for the restoration of of all the Gentiles as well. That's, that's all a part of the prophetic plan that has already been made known to us. Through Abraham's seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed, right? That's a part of that plan. So, the present state of the unbelieving Israelite, if they have never heard the message, they're still in that state of, as, as the Almighty would view them as being lost sheep. But once those lost sheep hear the message and those lost sheep reject the message, they're no more lost sheep. They're regarded now as being children of Hasatan of the synagogue of Satan. That's a hard reality, but that's what these scriptures tend to indicate. And so it's the desire of Elohim that every Judean Israelite come to Messiah Yahshua and be brought back into Israel. See, the house of Israel is the house of Israel because of the covenant that Elohim has with his people. And with the coming of Yahshua the Messiah, the renewal.
new covenant was enacted. And every Israelite must come in through the door. See, when that new covenant or renewed covenant was enacted, every Israelite was called to repentance and baptism. And, you know, we, we talked about uh, baptism and its importance and how it's uh, indicative of entering into the covenant. So those are things that we need to be mindful of. But with that, I'm going to close. Abba Yah, thank you right now for this uh, time of teaching. I trust that your disciples, your Talmudim, have been encouraged and enlightened and strengthened. May they be able to take this message and be able to share it and communicate it. May they be able to do it with balance. May they be able to teach it with love. For we know, Most High, that it is not your desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But we also know that those who have willfully rejected you at the present time have no place in the covenant. They have no place in the blessings or the benefits until they receive Yahshua as king. He is the door to the sheep. And so we bless you in the mighty name of Yahshua. May your great name be praised. Amen. Well, I trust that you who have joined us by live stream have been encouraged and strengthened. And for you who may be listening to us for the first time, I trust this teaching has been shared in a way that has caused you to understand the biblical truths regarding how the unbelieving Israelite is seen from the vantage point of Elohim with respect to his word. It is our desire to bring forth truth and to see all men come to salvation and be saved in Yahshua the Messiah. Well, if this has been a blessing to you, we trust that your heart's been encouraged and that you've been enlightened. We do want to invite you to go and check out our website at www.ncmmi.20m.com and go to the Written Word Library where you'll find a number of written resources and articles and books that will be helpful for your biblical enrichment and spiritual edification. And if you have been blessed and encouraged, so a seed to this ministry. You can go to that same website that we just gave at www.ncmmi.20m.com. Go to the donate button and you can sow a seed, provide a donation. You can do it uh, by donate or by cash app as well. Our cash app code is dollar sign NCMMI. Your gifts and your tokens of love towards us assist us in being able to continue to do the work that we're doing in producing materials for the Bible Institute and producing pamphlets, literature, books, so that we can continue to educate the people of Elohim and bring forth the word to the nations. Well, the Most High bless you. We thank you for joining us. And we want to also invite you to our Yom Kippur celebration. You can join us by live stream on tomorrow where we will be celebrating Yom Kippur at 6.30 p.m. Well, the Most High bless you. Shalom.